I do think that the debt markets settle down. We have some opportunity ahead of us. There's a lot of debt maturities that are due. I think at this point, most of the operators have been able to push their banks to extend and extend, but some of them are going to have to come due. Until the end of 2024, there may be kind of more distressed stuff that hits the market. Or well, at the same time, I think that cap rates should return eventually long term to where they were at a pre-COVID basis, but it may take a couple of years to get there. So I think it's an improving environment on the investment side but I think it's it's still a challenge, certainly is a challenge today. Welcome to season seven of Bridge the Gap, a podcast dedicated to informing, educating, and influencing the future of housing and services for seniors. Powered by sponsors AccuShield, Align, Nick Map Vision, ProCare HR, Sage, Hamilton Captel, Service Master, Patriot Angels, The Bridge Group Construction, and Salinity, and produced by Salinity Marketing. Welcome to Bridge the Gap Podcast, the senior living podcast with Josh and Lucas here at the annual ASHA meeting in sunny Miami. We got some good weather down here, not like Boston. Nope, nope. You guys are much better than Boston right now. It's a little chilly out there. <laughs> and for our listeners that hear that lovely Boston accent, I want to welcome Dennis Murphy of Aviva Senior Living. Welcome to the show. Excellent. Thank you for having me. Appreciate and, it. And welcome back. We did a virtual podcast a couple of years ago. And so it's great to get in person with you because you've taken on several new roles at a very exciting platform. Talk to us about what Aviva and Lloyd-Jones actually are. What is it? Sure. So from the Lloyd-Jones side, Lloyd-Jones is uh, run by Chris Finley, our CEO. And he had a very successful multifamily hotel real estate platform that he um, sold a good chunk of that off recently and has always wanted to get into senior housing. We made a handful of mainly acquisitions, um, but we have one new development opening in Port St. Lucie in July. It's an IL product that we're very excited about, but mainly acquisition focused. And the idea is that these are value add turnaround style deals. Many of these include some CapEx components. So we're going into maybe an older vintage building that needs some CapEx in order to compete in that market. Once we get the CapEx infused in the building and remains competitive with that market, we can usually lift our occupancy and push rate and really control our operations. And so while we expanded early on, we had a ton of people we hired up for what we hoped would be a great year of acquisitions in 2023. 2023 was a difficult year for senior housing on the transaction side. Didn't really allow us uh, the ability to grow too quickly. The, the debt markets were not cooperating. The bid-ask spread on a lot of these deals was was too large. So what we had to do was kind of scale back our operations a bit, reposition people within the organization. We have fantastic leadership on the operations side. We have Julie Lombardo, who I brought over from many years in a past life that we had join us over at Aviva. And so we had about a six-month year gap where we didn't have a lot of deal activity that allowed us to stabilize our operations, put some consistency in our platform and really start driving the results on the operation side, which we know will pay dividends in the future uh, as we continue to grow here. The slowdown is probably gonna loosen up. If I had to guess, once we go towards the end of 2024, transaction volume will pick up in senior housing and that should yield a handful of really good opportunities. So we're excited about the, the future and uh, we are coming out of what was a tougher time in senior housing, but I do see a light at the end of the tunnel. We're very excited. Well, I'm hearing that conversation, you know, more and more frequently, labor challenges, occupancy challenges, uh, you know, all of those things create opportunity. As far as culture at Aviva, what's your vision there? You know, I think that I came from great uh, operators and platforms in the past where uh, Benchmark had a very great culture, supportive on, on the growth opportunity. I started as an intern and exited as a VP of investments. So I want to instill that same kind of growth internally in the company that if you're uh, a young and ambitious person who wants to grow within the company, that that exists. As we grow as an operator, we will certainly have the need to add more and more talent to our platform, and we're excited to be able to to build that internally. Sometimes we're growing a little too fast, and we have to acquire some of that talent. And we've acquired some great talent throughout the years. We've just recently uh, did an acquisition in Stanton, Virginia, and acquired a Brightview asset that was Harrison Street. And they have a fantastic team. So that is a great acquisition of talent, but we also want to build that internally. So I think that's what we're working on from our our HR side of the house to really make sure that everyone can be set up with that successful growth plan in the future. Sure. I know uh, so many things have crossed your desk in your experience of working in the industry. Are y'all focused on territory or are you more focused on the right fit, the right deal? 
I think it's got to be the right opportunity for us. There's markets that we shy away from, but for us, the right opportunity can exist in many other other markets. We operate in Texas. Uh, we have management contract in Atlanta, uh, where we did a startup and a, a lease up property that we did very successful for an operator. So we do everything from development to management contracts, uh, turnaround style deals where maybe they didn't have the right operator before and we can step in and take over. So we're very excited about that. From our standpoint, we will look at most markets, but it has to be the right opportunity, especially if we're gonna uh, join as a JV partner, which most of our deals are. Looking more macro at the entire industry, I don't wanna let you get off the show without picking your brain about kind of bigger picture uh, industry things. You and I met on the Future Leaders Council at NIC, um, and you've had such great kind of exposure to so many different aspects of the industry. You've got a great mind around it too. You mentioned 2023 being uh, a challenge for you. I think it was a challenge really for the whole industry. 2022, 20, 23, uh, interest rates. I mean, all of these factors, labor, occupancy, what do you think kind of holistically macro for the industry does 2024 look like? I do think that the debt markets settle down. We have some opportunity ahead of us. There's a lot of debt maturities that are due. I think at this point, most of the operators have been able to push their banks to extend and extend, but some of them are going to have to come due. Tail end of 2024, there may be kind of more distressed stuff that hits the market. Well, at the same time, I think that cap rates should return eventually long term to where they were at a pre COVID basis, but it may take a couple of years to get there. So I think it's an improving environment on the investment side, but I think it's, it's still a challenge, certainly is a challenge today. You know, we can't get a development deal to pencil. It's very, very difficult. So that lack of supply that happened through COVID and the lack of development recently is going to add a challenge to the industry as a whole. We were already having a hard time being able to meet the needs of the seniors in the future. And now we have this gap where it was very difficult. We're at just the start of the funnel there. I think we have a long way to go. So I'll probably have a nice 15, 20 years of great demographics behind us to uh, propel me through my career here. But I'm excited about it. I think we, we've gone through COVID. The future environment is getting more friendly. So I think there's a much bigger focus this year due to the difficulty of, like you said, getting a development, the pencil. Seems like everybody's turning their focus more towards the value add. Does that uh, create some sort of a saturation where it makes it even harder to get these deals done? I mean, there's going to be winners and losers. And even I imagine interest rates are even affecting just even these value add. Who's going to win in in that sort of a realm this year? I think that the best operators will always succeed here. And so the ones that are disciplined, that have the right standards in place and policies, procedures, will be able to operate more effectively than others. A lot of groups are leveraging technology to try and improve their operations. But in many cases, it's the basics of the industry that, that really allow us to you control your labor. If you can control your occupancy and push rates, um, occupancies come back industry-wide, which is great. Uh, we're getting back to that kind of pre-COVID average level of occupancy, but the margins still aren't there. So there's still an opportunity for that value add style return. Everyone loves a value add style return because they like the idea of it, but it is a lot of work to do some of these turnaround deals. Some of them take longer to get the, them turned over. Some of them have reputational damage that you need to overcome. And so it's not as simple as just stepping in and turning around in two months. I think you just need to be partner with a good operator. And if you do so, you believe, believe in them, support them, and they can get you to these returns that you're looking for, as well as create a great product for the seniors in that market and that community, which I think ultimately is what all of us are really trying to do. Well, that's a great way to uh, kind of end our conversation, Dennis. It's it's great to see you here in Miami at Asha in some warmer weather and have a good conversation. So I know our listeners are probably thinking like, wow, you know, I want to make sure I'm following this journey with Aviva. We'll make sure that we connect all that in our show notes. So if you're listening to your podcast, just scroll down on your podcast player. You can hit the links to Dennis and his company there and follow along as well. Go to btgvoice.com, connect with us. Hit us up on LinkedIn. We'd love to hear your thoughts about the current uh, affairs of the marketplace. What are you seeing? What is this year going to be like? Join the conversation. And thanks for listening listening to another great episode of Bridge the Gap. Thanks for listening to Bridge the Gap podcast with Josh and Lucas. Connect with the BTG Network team and use your voice to influence the industry by connecting with us at btgvoice.com.